Hi everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor Software Program. In today's video I'd like to look at a losing trade, or in particular a trade where a market did not unfold as anticipated. I think it's important that software vendors do this because not all trades work out as profits. Um, there's always the other side of the coin where you have losses, the trick is keeping the losses small. So I think it's important that uh, we do um, in these videos look at losing trades and trades that don't work out as anticipated. It just gives a fair or a fairer um, impress or impression of what the how the markets unfold in real life. So let's go ahead and look at a trade setup we were looking at in our training webinar yesterday. Actually this unfolded live and it was a good um, example of how we could anticipate in advance uh, that a potential setup was unfolding. So we were looking as the market was rallying up here, you can see where the mouse is. In fact actually if I put some, uh, some white space on the right hand side you can see exactly what we were looking at. This is what we were looking at in the webinar about here. When the market was about here, we were anticipating that the market may, may well make an ABC rally up. And if it did, we were then looking for a potential uh, TS1 or TS3 sell for a potential holy grail short. So what's that? Well, basically, uh, for more experienced users, we don't go on the STF color, which is our color down here. We look at our higher time frame support and resistance. So if I go to our 15-minute chart, <coughs> you can see what we had on our chart in advance. There's the market's uh, rallying up uh, just after open and we had a level here I'll just take this off and show you where this came from this prior pivot so this level was on the chart there and in fact actually we, we could have actually had it on beforehand and that's the important po point on these they are leading indicators so they give you areas of support and resistance before the market even gets there we also had a level down here again I'll put that on as well of where we're anticipating the market may well decline to once this highs in so how do we uh, then work with this on our shorter term three minute chart? Well, what we were looking at is, if I go to the three minute chart now, we were looking at this being major resistance, <clears throat> this being the initial decline, then we're looking for an initial correction to unfold as an ABC. And again, we were actually looking at this <clears throat> before the market even got there. So we actually used, uh, I used this up wave tool here to then place on the, the chart here areas of where we're anticipating a high to come in and this was actually done live in our training webinar yesterday so I was saying that if we get up into these zones we should be looking for a potential TS1 or TS3 sell and as you can see that's exactly what unfolded so if I clear this off we got this uh, unfold here. I placed the analysis on I then said because this was a major high in other words a high at a higher time frame resistance the 15 minute resistance this was likely to be a wave one this was likely to be a wave two and therefore we would like to have a decline into potentially the DP target down here or at the very least our holy grail target which is our typical wave three WPT down here in other words we're anticipating this to be a wave two and therefore a wave three type decline so we set this up actually in the in the webinar yesterday live so let's see what happened well, as we went uh, forward, the market did get to the 100% initial risk level, and this is where a number of the, our customers in the webinar said that they would have brought their stop to break even. If they had have done, then, sorry about that, then they would have been stopped at for break even here. However, because you had high confidence in this particular setup, you may well have kept your stop at the initial entry level, and as you can see, the market came up here a bit later on and would have actually stopped you out for a losing trade. So this is what I wanted to look at in that even though you do the best analysis you do and it looks to be unfolding absolutely perfectly, you can get situations where you do have losing trades. This is why we use correct position sizing to vary the number of lots, contracts or shares to keep our initial risk small under control. In other words, when we do a losing trade, it's only what we call a one risk unit or one R unit. In this case, we're risking less than 2% of a sample $20,000 account, you can see up here. So this would be a $400 risk. Let's place the um, rest of the chart back on again. So we can see what happened the rest of the day. So the rest of the day, the market did actually carry on down and it did actually reach the first initial target, which was here. So this was a very, very frustrating day and I I'd deliberately chosen to do the uh, video today showing you that this can happen in real life trading. You can have a market that goes down to, well at the very least your initial target, but have been stopped out uh, for losing trade in, uh, in the meantime. 
So it's important to understand that losses can and will do unfold in any trading strategy, but the trick or the important point is keeping the losses small. So that was a very, very frustrating trade, but it's important to follow up on it. But what happened in the other markets? Well, let's have a look at the YM, which I thought was particularly actually quite, uh, quite spectacular. And that was, um, if I just zoom out a bit, that's where the market carried on rallying. Actually, it was uh, quite strong, rallied a lot stronger than the NQ. But look where it stopped, right at our 15 minute decision point resistance level. Just go to the 15 minute chart and show you how this was actually on our chart in advance. This was our pivot high here that we had before the market opened. So we had that level on our chart. Remember, this is done right the way back here before the market even opens. We then had another minor pivot high made here as well. So we could have placed a DP off that. Again, remember, these are leading indicators. They are on the chart in advance. Now, actually, the market went up and did make a high at these levels and gave us an automatic DP sale set up. But the point I want to stress is as the market was rallying up here, you knew in advance, in other words, before the market even got here, that this was a likely area of higher time frame resistance. And look what the market did. It went right up into that area. That was the high of the day before the market started to decline. So even if you didn't get a trade set up off this, knowing that this was a likely area of resistance and therefore was something you wanted to be avoiding buying in, or at the very least looking to get short, would have helped you uh, no end. If you'd gone on to the ES, we had exactly the same thing. <clears throat> Here's the ES. Here's our 15 minute DP. I'll just go to the 15 minute chart. So I want to show you where this came from. This came from the prior pivot. Remember, we used prior pivots. We just right mouse click, place the DP on. And remember, again, these are on the chart in advance. So before the market even got up there, this was an area of resistance. And just like the YM on the 15 minute chart, this gave us an automatic DP sell to help confirm the high. But of course, we want something leading that's there in advance. So there it was in advance. <coughs> the, the ES went up there, made the high of the day right at that 15 minute resistance area before it declined down. The ES was slightly different to the YM in that when the market made new highs, i.e. on this bar here, 1257, can you see how this bar here made new highs above the high made earlier in the day? In other words, it looked like it was breaking up to new highs. We had a VSA set up. What it, what is that? Well, that's on our volume indicator. Can you see down at the bottom here, that volume bar went red. In other words, that indicated that there was higher than, un than usual volume going on in this bar. Normally, a break to new highs with high volume indicates strength and a continued move to new highs. That's what most amateur traders think. But we have our resistance levels on our chart where we know that reversals occur. So when you have a move like this, we look at the next bar to see whether it makes a red sell bar at resistance. In other words, this one did. Can you see how this red sell bar, the bar after the VSA bar, gave us a red uh, sell bar and that was at resistance. That gave us an indication that a high was coming in. Therefore, we could look to take a short trade. The target probably would have to be a move right back to correct um, the entire rally during the day there. So you'd had the DP off here. Let's place our manual risk reward on in and around that bar to see what the uh, potential profit target would have been down at this level. And you can see a potential profit of 3.7R. In other words, 3.7 times greater than the initial risk. As the market declined down here, we would have followed the uh, pattern. If we look at the Elliott Wave pattern coming down into this low here, can you see how it was actually a lovely one, two, three, four, five, with the low here coming in right, literally right at our WPT target. This is the typical wave five WPT. In other words, the most likely area where this wave five decline would uh, stop. So it makes perfect sense to start to tighten your stop. In other words, you may want to come out MIT at this level. And if so, you'd have banked a profit of 3.2R, or more likely, you'd have wanted to just trail it one bar above the highs here, which would have then locked in 2.5R. If you're using our trade module, that would be really easy because you just click this bar option, and then that trails at the bar highs. Very, very nice little feature. But can you see how the correct position sizing now really helps? So on our NQ trade earlier, which was at the same time as this TS3 sell setup, we probably made a losing trade, in other words, a minus one R loss. But can you see how this next trade would have made a plus 2.5 R profit? In other words, 2.5 times greater than the initial risk. So in other words, this, this profitable trade 
would have more than made up for the losing trade earlier. And that's the important of, uh, importance of correct position sizing and why we do that to make sure our profits are larger than the losses. So really it was a mixed day yesterday. <clears throat> I started off the, uh, to, uh, the video with showing you how losing trades can and do happen and I wanted to go through that NQ trade in detail to show you that uh, even though at the time it seemed like it was a very good setup and absolutely perfectly uh, set up to potentially go down and make a very nice profit but the market had other ideas. This happens in trading. We actually just got uh, taken out there before the market went in our way so it was just very frustrating but it would have been a losing trade. But the trick to this is keeping the loss small, in other words at minus 1R. Then went on to show that as the market rallied up, it uh, rallied up on the YM and the, um, sorry, on the, yeah, the YM and the ES, but <clears throat> the most important thing was where the reversal happened. In other words, on both these markets, the actual highs of the day were made at a higher time frame DP resistance areas, and these came in and nailed the high of the day perfectly. The ES then gave us an opportunity to have a VSA set up, which I've shown you that would have given you an opportunity to make a short trade to then take advantage as the market declined down here. The result was a profit that was larger than the loss made earlier on the NQ. So even though the day started off frustrating with a losing trade on the NQ, the more experienced MT predictor users should have spotted this as well and been able to make a profitable trade that made you uh, money overall at the end of the day. And that's what trading is all about. So hopefully this has been a good video to show you not only losing trades, but also how our higher time frame support and resistance zones that are on our chart in advance can very often nail the highs and lows of the day for you and as such allow you to build a trading strategy in and around those.